So please introduce yourself to us. A cook is an untrained chef. A chef is a well-trained cook. A cook is somebody that has come in off the street that might, if, if you're lucky, that might have some skills that can put food together for you. Uh, I always looked for dishwashers. Again, they, they understand how my kitchen works, and that's where I always believed in promoting from within. And if I saw a guy that was giving me a little look like, hey, I wouldn't mind doing that. So I'd bring them on the line, let them see a little bit. And they're cooks, you know, they don't have the skills. Chefs are the kings of the kitchen. They're the ones that do the direction. And in, you know, tr in a classical kitchen, the chef was, is the head of the, the kitchen. Uh, most of the time they didn't even cook, uh, especially in larger kitchens, they, you know, nowadays, uh, that's changed a little bit, but even in big resort hotels or uh, resort properties in general, the chef doesn't cook. He's there doing administering and pushing all that down to his assistants or the sous chefs uh, to make sure that the cooks are doing it. So there's a pecking order there and uh, chefs are cooks, but cooks are not chefs. My name is Mikan Steven. I grew up in Portacot. Did my high school in Portacot. Yeah, almost everything. Friends, family. That's where my life started. Then I schooled at Bell's University. Then after that, though it was a bit rough and all that, a crazy journey anyway. That's a story for another day. Then I went to Lagos on my own without anybody's permission. Just I just wanted to see what life was. I started pushing out, exploring my life. And somehow, I got myself out here. With anything in life, whether it's food, photography, um, motocross, whatever it might be, it's coming from within. It's following your passion from within inside. Um, not stepping into the field of food and wine with the idea that I'm doing this because I see somebody on TV doing it and they must live a great life. You know, it all comes from within. You have to be driven from within. Otherwise, you're not going to be happy. Then, um, when I was much younger, my mom would always, you know, parents and African parents, they want to tell you, do this, do this, do this, do this. Even if the cup is right here, they'll tell you, I'll call you from the room to come on, please bring me this cup. So my mother was the kitchen type and she was always, I was always the one that was being sent, okay, cut this for me, do this for me, do this for me, do this for me. Then it was like work to me. But later on, that was where the passion developed. I started noticing some little things. Okay, when you do this to this, when you do this to this food, this is how it turns out, this is how it turns out. So it was just something like, more like an instinct. I felt the connection then, but I didn't want to chase it. I was just like, okay, everyone is chasing for the big degree, for the big degree. And let's see what it's going to get us to. And that's it.
I studied electrical engineering in school. Um, the chef thing hasn't really been my thing from the beginning. I just knew that, okay, I had a thing for cooking. Well, I didn't, pers I didn't know personally. It was the comments I get from people. They say, oh, you're really good. You can cook and all that. Okay, I was just like, okay. Well, I did my engineering in school and all that. I would cook for people then. And they'll say, okay, they like my stuff and all that. It was um, later on when I left school, I went to explore life then. I was finding it a bit difficult because I dropped out actually. So, and I didn't have certificate. I didn't know where to go. I was just like, okay, just do something. Just do something with your life. And so I said, okay, I have one skill. People say I know how to do this. So I tried um, selling a few stuffs, but it didn't necessarily work out well for me though. So. I got back home, somehow, somehow, I rolled into um, Red Dish because then I started seeing, um, when I started picking up the interest in the culinary world, I started seeing the schools and all that. So I enrolled into Red Dish Culinary School and that was how my chef journey started. advice to young chefs from the age of 16 to sort of 29, 30 is 14 years of a sponge. You're absorbing knowledge. Don't take a job for the sake of money. Don't worry about earning £500 a month or a year more somewhere else. Go and get knowledge because that becomes a bigger passport for everything. The money will come once you've mastered your craft and you become incredibly talented. Work for big chefs and find a different level of comfort. When things get too comfortable and you're still living with your parents and you've still got your first job and you don't want to move out because everything's too comfortable, get out. Put yourself in a strange situation in the middle of Barcelona. Put yourself in the middle of Paris. Put yourself in the middle of Belgium and see what's available. And it's amazing how much confidence it gives you. And more importantly, it's great to, to, to sort of eat and travel at the same time. Fantastic. Drop <laughs> uh, out. Well. I would say nobody actually knew. <laughs> nobody knew. It was just um, I did a five year course in school, then got suspended, then I had another extra year. So that was like seven years. So in the seventh year, I just like, fuck this thing, man. I'm tired. <laughs> but I got my school fees. So that was what I had. I just used my school fees and went to Lagos. I was like, okay, let's just, what does life go? So when the money finished, that was when my eyes started opening and all that. Then I said, ah, ah, okay, well, life has gotten real now. Let's see what's up, what's up, what's up. But then nobody really knew. People thought I was in school. People thought I'd finished because I've spent a long time in school. So it wasn't something I wanted to talk about. I didn't want to tell you, it's, it's nobody's business. It's my life. So I just said, okay. Just, you want something, go for it. And it's not like I left for any reason. I was just like, tired, let me just see what's out there. So that's just it. Okay, um, then in Lagos, things were not really working out. I was just trying to pick up and understand life. Then my brother called me, he was in Abuja, he did his NYC here, he called me. He said, okay, come around, let's start a little something. Let's do a little business. So I came, and we started a little smoothie business, but it was a bit rough too, you know, Nigeria and everything is crazy out here. So it didn't work out well. So one day my mom called me, I was like, okay, you're good at this cooking thing. Why don't you just push it? I said, all right, okay. You got the money to spend. I don't have, I don't mind. So they sent me the red dish and really, that's like one of the best working environments I've seen. Like, they give you the ability to explore your talents, be free, be creative. Like, it was a whole new world for me. Like, I felt like Picasso. I felt like Leonardo da Vinci. I saw, um, I saw different things that you could do with simple things, how to make something complex out of something simple. But those were the basics. They just taught me and everything. And then after that, I went for uh, my training. I did my training at Transcorp and it was tough there. There I got the real standard of professionality and all that kicked off. I worked in some other hotel and then some other few places, little pubs, clubs and all that, but 
I wasn't settled. Like, okay, you know, when you don't feel like um, this is what I'm meant to do, something is missing out. So you're still out there searching and searching and searching. So most of those times I left. And now I met someone, we kicked off to the clubhouse, and that's the story. <laughs> and we're here and we're still pushing on. I wasn't really conversing with a lot of dishes at first. So I was like, okay, let me just see what's up. And then um, they'll do French cuisine, they'll do um, around the world, Indian cuisine, Chinese. But what really got to me was the Chinese cuisine. They had this sort of flavors that would just burst into your mouth and everything. And everything. I was more inclined to that than all of the cuisines. But I like to mix flavors. That's my own. I like to play with flavors. I like to see different things. I'm not really the follow the recipe kind of guy. Just do something different. It's food, it's not poison. So what's the worst that can happen? It can only go bad. <laughs> Um, this dish, it's, as I said, I like to play with food. It's one of my experiments, so never tried it before. I just want to see how it is. It's um, a rice dish with, um, with a meaty filling, chicken, then that goes with a hearty soup, um, a vegetable soup, which is more like a rice ball, fried rice ball, something like that. Over the last 10 years, stay in front of the competition because there's two ways in this industry. You, you move with it or it moves you. And I've seen so many sad stories across the decade where chefs have just got lazy, got lazy, given up and lost that hunger to be competitive because it's the best job in the world. That's not really a job, it's a passion because when you're rubbing shoulders, and here we are now, 10 years later, and I've got a restaurant next door to Jamie Oliver's, and we're both literally two meters apart. Phenomenal chef, uh, and we keep each other on our toes. So that's exciting for me, and that's been the one key issue across the 10 years of filming Kitchen Nightmares. Never, ever, ever give up. Uh, let me see, let me see. A bit of luck is involved, a bit, but I'd say it's the experiences, yeah. Um, a lot of bad decisions, they give you the harsh lessons of life and you learn from them. So out of those bad decisions, you get to make better decisions. And I'd say these are some of the things that have actually shaped me to who. Do I regret? No, I don't regret at all. I, I like to see life like experience everything exhaust yourself don't don't come here leaving anything behind give out all you have to give be creative go to the end be extreme and that's it so i like it that way let's see what the future got for us i don't know what the future holds but i'm anticipating <laughs>
Um, what's my advice to people out there that want to become chefs? Um, I think the first thing you need is the drive, the passion, then a passion for art, a passion for hard work, a passion for food. Like some, you have to be inclined in some sort of way because it's really hard and it's a tough journey. It's not an easy journey. It's a big world out there. The chef industry or the culinary world is a big one. So many things involved and it's hard work every day. And you gotta have something that inclines you towards the profession. Like, okay, you know that, okay, outside every other stress, this is what keeps me going. I think that's the first step. If you don't have that, you can barely survive in the industry. But if you have that, that can keep you going and going and going and going. Well, we don't know what the future holds, but as long as you keep improving, something is going to come out. Something good is going to come out. That's it.